Good morning. It's good to be back with you at my kitchen counter. Um, it was only a week off and it feels like it's been forever, but um, I am doing better. I have said this in many different settings, but once the second dose of the COVID vaccine hit my system, it seemed to knock out almost all of the long haul COVID um, symptoms. So I am feeling 99.9% .9 of my normal self. We'll see if I get that one point percent back, but um, I'm doing so much better. So it's good to be back with you this morning. Hey, Annie. <laughs> and um, to be talking to you again, my candle remains lit. Um, we're seeing spikes in different places. This thing is not over. Um, hopefully folks are getting their vaccination, but we're just trucking on with scripture. Um, it is Easter tide, which uh, in church we're talking about the resurrection appearances of Jesus. And part of the uh, scripture that is uh, given for this coming Sunday is from the book of Acts. So the book of Acts is just an awesome book to read. It really is. <laughs> I love so much of the Bible. But um, this is amazing because what... Uh, so Acts is written by Luke. He wrote um, the Gospel of Luke, and then he wrote the Acts of the Apostles, uh, what we know as the book of Acts. And he wanted you to know that um, the Holy Spirit uh, came upon those who had been following Jesus and heard about him. And when the Holy Spirit came upon them, they were able to continue the work of Jesus. So that's the deal. And uh, so we have a miracle um, today. <laughs> Sometimes I feel like being healthy after a year is a miracle. So it seems appropriate to read about a miracle. But I love so much of this passage. I'm in Acts 3. I'm reading the 6th through the 16th verse. Um, of course, this is after the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And so Peter and John are on their way to the temple at three o'clock in the afternoon because that's what you did as a good and faithful Jew. Again, these folks are good and faithful Jews. They're going for the time of prayer. And one of the other things that's happening is that at the temple in Jerusalem, where they are, um, if you were, if you had an infirmity, if you were uh, blind or if you were lame, um, you would have friends sometimes who would take you to particular gates around the uh, temple. Temple is very large. And so you would kind of have your spot. And um, again, being it just like people still call the church to look for help, uh, that's what these human beings were doing. They were outside of the temple gate hoping for um, offerings and enough money to live on. So the man who was taken to the gate that's called Beautiful is uh, a regular, they know him. It's like folks who hang out outside my, uh, my condo uh, <laughs> near the food bank. They're regulars, everybody knows them. And so the man uh, sees Peter and John and he kind of goes, hey, got something for me? And so here's uh, Peter's response to the man who is lame and uh, cannot walk and um, is asking for a donation. Peter says, I don't have a nickel to my name, but what I do have, I give you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. Peter grabbed him by the right hand and pulled him up. In an instant, his feet and ankles were firm and he jumped to his feet and he walked. The man went into the temple with them, walking back and forth, dancing and praising God. Everybody there saw him walking around and praising God, and they recognized him as the one who sat begging at the temple's gate, beautiful. They rubbed their eyes, astonished, scarcely believing what they were seeing. The man threw his arms around Peter and John, ecstatic. All the people ran up to where they were at Solomon's porch to see it for themselves. When Peter saw that he had a congregation, he addressed the people. Oh, Israelites, why do you take this with such complete surprise? Why do you stare at us as if it's our power or piety that made him walk? The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of our ancestors, has glorified his son, Jesus. The very one that Pilate called innocent, you repudiated. 
you repudiated the Holy One, the Just One, and asked for a murderer in his place. No sooner killed the, you no sooner killed the author of life than God raised him from the dead. And we're the witnesses. Faith in Jesus' name put this man, whose condition you know so well, on his feet. Yes, faith and nothing but faith put this man healed and whole right before your eyes. Uh, Peter goes on preaching, as some of us always do, preaching too much. But there's so much that I love about the scripture. Um, one is that Peter makes it clear that it's not anything he's doing. It's not his power. It is not his piety. Um, it is nothing except for calling upon the name of Jesus Christ to do the work that Jesus Christ wants to do in the world, that God wants to do in the world. And I just love that image because I, I just feel like that's true in my life. You know, anything that I've done that is worthy um, truly has been through the power of God. If you guys waited on me and hoped for me to be able to do something, it would be a long wait. But when God can use me to speak and to give words of hope and reassurance, that works. That is God working through me. And the thing is, is that these human beings and the institutions that we make, whether they're the church or the government or anything else, um, is bound to get mucked up because I said mucked up <laughs> because again, human beings are in charge. And sometimes when we gather to try to be in charge of things, we don't do very well. But there are always human beings who are listening to God in their lives. And sometimes it's named as a Christian and sometimes as a Muslim and sometimes as a Jew and sometimes just as people who know that spirit of God within them. But those human beings are trying with the best of their ability to step out of the way in their own humanness and let that eternal spirit work through them. And so the message here is that um, the person of Jesus Christ as son of God doesn't stop doing incredible things in our world, but needs us to make them happen. I've always thought that was a very risky proposition that God uh, counted on that um, once his son, Jesus Christ, was gone, that we would be able to carry on. And, um, and over the last uh, 2,000 years, we've done well sometimes, sometimes not as well, to listen and to respond to God's love and God's grace and put our healing presence into that work that Jesus started. So here's the thing. You're it. Tag, you're it. You are the one now standing in Peter's place. It doesn't matter that you're not Peter. It doesn't matter that you're not Jesus. What Peter to me is saying is that all that matters is that we seek God, seek God's power to work through us, and then hopefully let others know that that's where the power comes from. Sometimes that power looks like just listening to someone and helping them to kind of vent and work through what's going on in their life. And sometimes it's just wearing a mask, like I've said a lot. And sometimes it's um, giving generously because you happen to have financial resources that some of us don't. And so you can give and support good things and good causes. Um, and sometimes it simply looks like prayer, talking to God and asking God where next and what next. I truly don't believe that there's any difference between the Holy Spirit that came to Peter and John and all of those who were following on Pentecost Day and how they used that power of God in their world and us today. Because I believe that God's eternal spirit is eternal, <laughs> ever present, ever green, ever creating, ever making a difference in our world. And it does not change in terms of desiring to let people know about that love and that healing and that wholeness that God offers. That is always, steadfast, always. And it comes to us today 
one of the things that I think Luke wanted us to know in this story too is that the temple isn't particularly the locus, the, the center of healing. Um, even though it had been in the past and it had been the place for offering uh, offerings, usually uh, animal sacrifices or sometimes money, to look for healing and forgiveness and all of those things. But that the power was no longer located in the building or even with the priests. It was located in faith. Faith in the person of Jesus Christ for us. Faith in the God who had raised Jesus from the dead. I know that we have gone through terrible times this last year. Uh, tomorrow is the one year anniversary of waking up with COVID for me. Um, and fortunately, about a week ago, I started feeling well. It's wonderful. I know that others have experienced the loss of loved ones or jobs or just it, it's been so hard to be isolated. All of that is true. But the power of God to help us to hold on and to carry on has been there all through it. Coming to us exactly where we are in our places that we live, into our hearts just as we are. And that faith that Peter says is what healed the man can work a healing in us as well. I, throughout my life, I thought it would be wonderful if I could have been Peter or John and healed people of their physical ailments. That was never my gift. I have a friend who's a doctor and she was amazing in her ability to help physical healings and that really worked through her faith as well. Each of us has a gift because we are a child of God. And each of us in the places where we live and what we do can make a difference for our world. It's what we believe. Again, as Peter says, not because of who we are, not because of our piety or our power, but our ability to have faith in God. Our ability to stay that God can use even a broken, flawed vessel like me if I'm willing to proclaim God and look for God's direction and what to do. And so here's me this morning at my kitchen counter doing what I can do, <laughs> which to me always just looks like talking, but there you go, to encourage you you are loved by God. You are God's child in this generation. You, like Peter and John and so many who followed in their tradition, can have faith and make a difference for those around you. Peter said, I don't have any money, but this is what I've got. I don't know what God has given to you but I know that God can use you to share love, compassion, healing, wholeness, to find forgiveness in your life and offer it to others. Those are the promises that I believe in. And that's the power of our resurrected Christ that we celebrate during this Easter tide. I'll be back again Sunday. I'll do a YouTube thing because it's the only way that I can do the technology, um, but hopefully it's helpful. That's me always. Hopefully it's helpful. Blessings and peace on this day. Bye.